Hi everyone, this is Mike Bates, and in this short video, I'm going to share with you the transition plan for the remaining um, weeks of the spring 2020 semester, and also share with you a basic template that can be copied into your Blackboard course. Uh, essentially, it's a week-by-week -week folder structure that can serve as a framework for you as you plan and deliver content to students for the remaining weeks in the semester. So. During March 16th to April 12th, this period is being considered off-campus flexible learning. Think of this time period as a bridge to get students to a possible return to campus on April 13th or a possible transition to fully online learning on April 13th. And that decision will be communicated to you by Harper College. But for this next month or so, the goal here is to have this sort of bridge to April 13th and continue to have students engage in some way with course material. But be aware that students will have limited access to student support resources. So because of that and because of everything that may be going on with them personally, we are asking that faculty practice flexibility with graded assessments. So it's okay to build out content. It's okay to have some low stakes assessments, like an assignment or a quiz or even an exam, but know that some number of your students likely will not complete this graded assessment on time. And if that happens, we want you to be prepared for that and practice flexibility with students and give them the benefit of the doubt. If you're teaching an online course, you know, typically those are built up already week by week. So that should continue as usual. But again, for circumstances outside of our control, we should be demonstrating flexibility with graded assessments for students. Spring break should be as usual in that you don't allow any graded assignments to be submitted during spring break, but certainly students can be asked to read or look at some content over that week. And then on April 13th is when we would again either return to campus or have a transition to fully online learning, which is asynchronous learning, meaning we use due dates, but students aren't necessarily expected to sit live in a session with you at the same time as they would if they were coming to campus. This also means that as faculty, you would engage regularly with students, checking into Blackboard daily, checking email daily, and giving them consistent and regular feedback. And we'd recommend that you organize your learning units by week, if possible. During both of these times periods, it's possible that some faculty will find a tool like Blackboard Collaborate or WebEx to be helpful to host live sessions with students, and we encourage that. However, it will be difficult to get all of your students to be in those sessions with you at the same time. So it's important not to penalize students by grade for not being in those sessions with you. It's also important to ensure that if a student can't be in that session with you, that they have the opportunity to learn that material in some other way. And that may be simply by recording this video and posting it online and offering something like a discussion board for them to engage with the content and perhaps even engage with each other or with you. So what I'm going to do now is transition to Blackboard to show you a basic folder template that we built to guide you through the rest of the semester. And if you would like, we can copy this into your course. And at the end of this video, I will show you how to request that. So I'd like to bring your attention over here to the course menu in Blackboard. And what's highlighted here is learning menu, learning modules, spring 2020. So this is something we can copy into your course menu, and it will show up as hidden, as you can see by this square with a line through. It's hidden from students, but you can see it and you can edit it. And it's a folder that will, that's called Materials for Our Class, starting March 16, 2020. When I click on this folder, you'll see first a tutorial for faculty, and this is only should only be visible to you. It's about a 19-minute tutorial walking you through how to build content using this folder template. After you've watched it and once you're ready to deploy the folder for students to engage with, you can delete this video by clicking the drop-down arrow and then delete. The first item, which is being highlighted here in purple, that your students would see is some kind of initial engagement with them. This could be as simple as a short note from you. It could also be a simple video message that you record. And we have another video and instruction guide on how to use Collaborate to record a short video. 
or it could be a discussion board. And early on during this transition, we encourage you to have some kind of basic communication with students. How are you doing? How has the last been week been for you? Um, you know, what have you heard about Harper College? Those types of things, just to get them engaged with you and each other in the class. And if you can hook them back in early, they're more likely to continue and persist in the course. Next is a folder for the week of March 16th through March 22nd, activities and assignments for off-campus flexible learning. If I click into this folder, we have three basic items that we're recommending you include in your course. And of course, you can edit these or modify them as you see appropriate. The first would be any assigned reading or viewing you want them to do for the week. So these might be things like chapter readings if they have textbooks um, or other book readings that you would assign. These could be links to articles that you provide, YouTube videos, or publisher content. So this is typically the type of um, engagement with content you would have students do during a face-to-face -face class, either before or after they come to the class. Next is the section called Instructor Interpretation or Lecture on Content. The idea here is to provide some kind of engagement with your course material that they would get if they came to your class in person, face-to-face. -face. So this could be as simple as written notes or an explanation of the key concepts from the readings or the viewing that week. It could also be a PowerPoint with voiceover that you record using Blackboard Collaborate, where you're really focusing in on the key content areas. And then we're recommending some kind of low stakes assess assignment, something that's worth a few points. It's not gonna really impact their grade negatively if they don't finish it or if they don't finish it on time, something like a short reflection paper, a simple quiz on the material, or even a quick discussion board. So the idea is we're continuing to engage them with the content, really trying to bridge them to that full return, either to campus or online on April 13th. If I go back to the, uh, the main folder, you'll see the March 23rd to 29th is spring break. So students really don't have expectations to submit anything during this week. And then the next two weeks continue this format of off-campus flexible learning. So if I go into either of those two folders, you'll see the same structure that I just walked through a moment ago. Moving on to the folders that are grayed out, these have not been yet made available. So when you click on this, you'll see a folder structure for fully online learning. This is a more robust learning experience for students that is fully asynchronous. So you'll see in the first item, a module overview that includes a list of learning outcomes for the week, module activities, and module assignments. The idea being that if a student looks in this first purple item, they'll see everything that they need to know for that week in terms of what's expected from them. Then for module activities, they can click into this folder and they can have access to the assigned readings or viewings and then anything that you create to highlight those key concepts like your lecture guide or a voiceover with PowerPoint or some other message that you want to communicate to students. Going back up a level, I can see module assignments. And so this is where you might have more of a discussion board, an assignment like a reflection paper or a quiz, and then a more high stakes quiz or test for that week. And so this is what you would make available to students after the date of April 13th. Again, feel free to make any edits to this that you see fit, but we just wanted to provide you with a structure to get you started to build out your content. So now I'm going to show you how to request support from the Academy during this transitional period. And I'm going to point you to the planning for a rapid transition to online instruction webpage that has been sent out to you via emails from me, uh, Michael Bates. So you can search your inbox for that, or you can simply visit harper-academy.net, which is the website of the Academy for Teaching Excellence. And then you can access this guide by clicking on the banner, resources, and support. If you scroll down through this page, you'll see um, several different content areas where you can get assistance through videos or guides that we've created or where we have pointed you to Blackboard support in some cases. To request help from our center, though, we would ask that you submit the online instruction support form by following the link here at the top of the page. All requests for assistance from the Academy that relate to Blackboard 
instructional technology, instructional design, or online teaching should be submitted through this form and will follow up with you no later than one business day. Our team is working remotely during this time, and so submitting requests through this form will allow us to stage workflow and follow up with you promptly. If you send individual emails to our team members or if you send an email to Blackboard Tech Support, it will not get responded to as promptly as if you submit something through this form. And also our phone lines will not be active during this time. So all we ask here is you include your email, your name, a phone number, the course that you're referring to, and if it's multiple courses, that's fine. Just put one here. Uh, the modality that you were teaching it in, and then tell us what kind of support you need, if it's Blackboard, if it's something with Collaborate or Live Instruction, or if you're transitioning a course from face-to-face -to, -face to online. We also have a question asking if you want the folder template that I just showed you added to your course. If you do, let us know what the course number is, and let us know if you're adjunct or full-time faculty. Submit that, and we'll follow up with you promptly. Thanks, and know that we're here to help you during this time of transition.